and I'm gonna share with you guys today exactly how I lost 20 pounds in the last two months easily without feeling like I was trying, without feeling like it was even an effort, without feeling like I was on a diet, without eating any diet food, pretty much eating french fries every day, as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> and I was able to unlock this stored body fat that has been a struggle for me for years, literally years. I have been fighting this weight in a yo-yo, up and down, over and over with the keto diet for years. I was trying to make the keto diet a lifestyle basically and it's just was not meant to be long-term in my life. So today, I'm gonna share with you guys exactly what I've done, exactly how I'm living my lifestyle now without a diet, I will never be on another diet, how I'm integrating food flexibility and food freedom and I've completely healed my relationship with food to the point where I don't think there's any bad foods. I think everything in moderation is perfect. And I'm just gonna share with you guys what I've learned. I've broken away from following a lot of like the keto influencers, the keto people, all of their opinions on glucose and what foods you should be eating, good, bad foods, all of that. I've broken completely away from them. And I focused on studying PhDs on the metabolism and went straight to the source of the people who know what they're talking about as far as burning body fat, metabolically burning body fat off your body, okay? And so there's a ton of myths out there. There's a lot of things that I think are clouding our vision and causing us stalled out because we're listening to all of these different people and all of these different opinions. I stopped reading the books, I stopped listening to the podcast, I stopped doing all of those things and I started listening to music to literally shift my energy because once I had it and it clicked, I was like, okay, I know exactly what to do. I'm gonna do these things, I'm gonna implement this into my lifestyle and I'm not looking back. I'm not walking backwards, I'm not trying to figure out what everyone else is doing. I'm gonna do this and this is this is the strategy I'm gonna follow. So let's get right into this, okay? What I have done is I have combined two specific models. The insulin model of obesity, right? And calories in, calories out. I combined these two thought processes into one to create a package of something that I believe to be the ultimate way to actually not only lose the weight, but keep it off. And here's how I did it. <laughs> One, I started with fasting. So regardless of what you eat, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what food you're actually eating. If you just set one individual solid goal of fasting every day. So with my fasting every day, I'm doing OMAD, which is one meal a day. But you could do exactly what I'm doing with two mad, which is two meals a day if you want. Um, and we're gonna get to how that will work here in a second, but let's just talk about OMAD for a second, okay? So with OMAD, I have been fasting 23 hours of the day. And when I say that, you're probably like, oh my God, how can I go without food for that long? I'm not hungry, I have no cravings, I feel amazing when I'm fasting, and it fits effortlessly into my life, and this works in my lifestyle. If this seems restrictive to you, then maybe an OMAD lifestyle would not be a good fit for you, but for me it is. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit more again why that is as well. So with OMAD, I go 23 hours fasted in the day, and then I have a one hour eating window. Now, when you eat within one hour of time, it actually takes a lot less than that to eat a meal if you're not drinking alcohol. If you're drinking alcohol, I can see how a meal can like last for four hours because you're continually drinking and snacking and eating. I did not cut out alcohol completely. I will have alcohol on occasion, like on holidays, on birthdays, on vacations, on times when that, like, but I don't have it in my daily routine anymore because alcohol, I feel for me, is holding me back. And so I wasn't able to do OMAD every single day effortlessly and easily until I cut the alcohol out of my daily routine. So cut out the alcohol, focusing on OMAD one meal a day, and then going these fasted hours, 23 hours. And during my meal, this is where the magic happens, okay? I'm not restricted in the types of foods that I can eat. I can eat whatever I want in that meal. 
But here's the thing. I'm also mindful to stay at a negative energy balance. So following the different PhDs and their advice on, it's, it's really scientific advice based on the studies and the actual proof of how your body metabolizes food and what it does and how it stores fat and burns fat. Basically, I landed on finding my maintenance calories and then eating below my maintenance calories level. I'm not sitting here tracking to the ounce of weighing my food. I'm literally just entering it into an app to make sure I'm in the ballpark of like hitting my goal <laughs> of around 1600 calories a day. I, I try to be around minimal 14 to upwards towards 1800. Right there, that's kind of like my range. But I'm not counting calories in that I'm not like like figuring things out before I eat them. And I think this is really a, like a big part of it. What I do is I just eat my meal and then I go in and I'm like, okay, I think I had like a cup of rice and like about this much chicken and like this, there, here's a roll that was in there. And I just add it in just to make sure I'm at a deficit. I do not actually have to track my food with that one meal because it, what I've learned in the last two months of doing it, it's very, very hard for me to actually go over. And if anything, when I'm tracking, I end up eating a little bit more just because I'm like, oh wow, I've only had 1200 calories with that meal. However, I'm completely satisfied on that meal, but it does kind of cause me to then eat something additional just to make sure I'm not too low in calories, if that makes sense. But it's extremely hard. I'm not saying you can't do it, but on a daily basis, you're probably not gonna overeat in that one meal unless, Unless, and this is the big unless, unless you are keto and you're consuming a lot of very high, high calorie dense foods, which I think was my big problem when I first started OMAD and I was trying to do keto with OMAD. I was combining them together, but then I was eating a lot of calories within that meal because a lot of the, the keto food is full of cheese, full of fats, full of things that are very high caloric. And then I was always feeling deprived. So like, I felt like, I was hungry for something, but I didn't want to eat the keto foods, if that makes sense. And that ended me up, ended me having a major spiral. Every time I would allow myself to eat carbs, I would overeat on the carbs. And then I would, I would like, instead of eating like one donut, I would eat like five donuts because it's like, okay, I want a donut. I don't know the next time I'll actually be able to have a donut. Right now with food flexibility, there's nothing off limits. But if you guys have been following my journey, you know I had my microbiome tested and I found out that a lot of the issues that I was experiencing with like stomach pain, discomfort, as well as keeping me stalled out with my weight actually was a lot of it to do with the foods that I was eating on keto. And so when I got this list of microbiome foods, I focus on avoiding the foods that they tell me to avoid. That is the only thing I really care about as far as food goes. Nothing else is off limits though to me. And the, the least restrictive that I can be, the better. So healing your relationship with food I think is really, really important because it steps you away from feeling guilty when you eat that donut, right? And, and if you cannot feel guilty when you eat food, then you will never again feel the need to actually go and like eat whatever all the, like, like because you're eating whatever all the time. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But eliminating the guilt aspect with food and this being bad and this not being helpful to your goals or you're gonna gain weight if you eat this or that, when you eliminate that and you just allow yourself the freedom to be able to eat whatever you want within a specific boundary of time as well as within a specific boundary of, of quantity. So I'm not talking about eat as much as you want, I'm talking about whatever you want within that negative energy balance while your goal is fat loss, right? So then I combine this with um, the fasting model here. So we're in, we're talking about the calories model, but then we're also talking about the insulin model. So when you combine these two together with the fasting, now what's happening is your body does not need to fight to conserve energy when you're in a deficit, the same as it would if you were eating like a low fat diet all day long and you were doing calorie restriction and you were having snacks all day and you were spiking your, um, insulin all day long, your body then goes into a mode where it needs to conserve energy. And so you're going to start feeling cold. You're going to start lowering your metabolic rate. Your body's going to start taking energy from other areas. So instead of burning 
at a high level of calories your body's going to conserve. Now, when you do fasting within this method, you are lowering your insulin. So it doesn't matter if you have high uh, carb foods within that one meal, your glucose is going to spike with that one meal and then insulin is going to shuttle it and then insulin is no longer going to be needed. And then you're, if, when you go that long duration of at least 18 hours, I would say 16 to 18 hours at a minimum, I think when you're trying to do this. And then for me going to 23 hours, I give myself a very long duration of time where my body has easy access to unlock the fat stores so that it can use it for fuel without feeling like it needs to lower my metabolic rate. So this is just what I've learned and how I've implemented it and why I believe what I'm doing now is setting me up for long-term success and I'm not setting myself up to crash or to lower my metabolic rate. However, there's really no way to know, no way to test this. It is kind of theory. I learned a lot of that aspect of it from like Dr. Jason Fung where he talks about how, you know, with calorie restriction, if you keep your insulin low through fasting, you are able to tap into and access that stored body fat. Now, when you actually eat the food and you have carbs and you have insulin, your body's doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to store that those calories into your body in different ways. It's either supposed to use your protein to build muscle, it's you're supposed to use your carbohydrates to fuel different areas of your body, your brain, the glucose, all of that, and the fat, it's going to shuttle it into fat storage, okay? So you are you eat a meal, you're gonna use some of that energy, but you're also gonna store some of that energy. And then you go a long duration fasted, like 23 hours a day, and then now your body is going to burn the fat that not only that it, you consumed in that meal, but then also burn the body fat off your body too, if you are at a caloric deficit. Now, what I did for step one was I found my maintenance calories level. Now, the way that you find out what your maintenance calories level is, you can do this in a free way simply by taking a week where you maintain your weight and tracking what you're eating in an app so you can kind of get a ballpark of how many calories you typically eat a day in your normal lifestyle before making any of these changes. And this is assuming that you are maintaining your weight, not gaining weight or not losing weight. And then the average of the calories for that week, that would be your maintenance level calories for you to stay the same, okay? That's a pretty good ballpark of how to do it that way. Or there, there are some free apps where you can try to find your maintenance calories if you search for that. Um, I use an app, which I'm not affiliated with, but it's not a free app. It's a coaching app where like you are constantly checking in every week, you're giving your weight and they're changing your numbers based on your progress and what your goals are and where you've been. And it will even change your maintenance level calories as you lose weight because even when you do the fasting and then you're kind of protecting your metabolic rate in a lot of ways with that, you're still going to lower your um, calories you burn at resting. You're still going to lower that as your calories are lower and your body gets used to a lower level of calories. This is just what your body's going to do long term to survive and that's natural and that's normal, okay? But we want to minimize the impact of that through the fasting, okay? If that makes sense. So I like the app because it does, it will literally calculate that for you and while I don't necessarily stick to trying to achieve the high calories they tell me that I can eat with weight loss, I'm just focused on staying below my maintenance level. And so, like I said, some days that's 1600, some days that's 1400, some days that's 1800. It changes from day to day based on what I'm eating. So another thing that I do that's helped me is I use specific supplements within my fasted window. I used ketones. Even though I'm not eating the keto diet, I don't eat low carb, I actually eat very high carb and high protein right now. I'm using the ketones because they allow you to get the benefits of the keto diet without the actual keto diet. So as example, the ketones in your system, they help with appetite control, they help with hunger so that you don't have those cravings while you're fasting. And for me, nighttime is my most difficult time, right? That's when my family's eating their dinner. I usually have my OMAD meal for lunch. Like I will close my window at 3 p.m. and then I start fasting through the night. And then, so what I will do is I will have a nat ketone at the beginning of my next fast and it just kind of helps prime my fast so that I don't 
experience the cravings. I'm not trying to eat some popcorn and chips and snack while we were are sitting around, you know, watching movies and stuff. And then in the morning time, I have a pro shake, which it combines the ketones with low protein. And so I have that typically about one hour before I break my fast. So it's almost like I have it. It gives me those ketones. It gives me a low level of protein. It helps me then eat, feel fuller on less when I eat my meal. And then I start my next fast with a ketone and I just do repeat that every single day. I just been doing that day in, day out and it's allowing me to maintain my muscle while I am burning body fat. My actually, my mu muscle actually increased while my, I lost the 20 pounds, which is remarkable and crazy. As far as exercise goes this entire time, I actually got a rebounder. It's like a mini trampoline for the lymph drainage, not for the calorie burn to lose weight. Because like I mentioned before, when I was researching through these PhDs, what they actually found was when you pick up some form of like cardio exercise and you start burning more calories with your workouts, your body actually adapts and changes the amount of calories you burn at resting to match. So like if you're normally burning like 2000 calories at resting and then you start doing a 200 calorie workout, then yes, you for a couple weeks, you're going to be taking those 200 calories off the two or adding it to the 2000 calories. So then maybe you'll be burning 2200 calories, but eventually your body's going to lower the amount it burns at resting so that you're burning 2000 calories, even though you're doing that extra 2000 calories. So whew, all that to say, if you pick up a workout and you're doing something um, where you're burning calories, uh, just keep in mind, it's something that you probably want to do for other reasons other than fat loss, something like mood benefits. For me, the rebounder helps with the lymph drainage, which is which does help with a lot of things as far as fat loss goes. Um, and also, it's, it's just incredible for the mood. Like, I just love it. And I'm lifting weights. And the reason I'm lifting weights is because when you are lifting weights while you are working on fat loss, you will maintain your muscle mass, which is what you want. You don't want your body to start using that muscle um, in some way for fuel of your body or any in any way, you just don't. So from what I've learned, <laughs> this is the exact strategy, okay? So if you are like, all right, that sounds great, but there's no way that I can fit one meal into my life, like I need two meals, very simply, you are simply splitting the amount of calories that you're consuming into those two meals. You're eating the exact same amount in the day and then you're spreading those meals out and you're not snacking in between. So you're allowing your insulin to rise with that meal, fall, stay low in between the meals, and then you're having your, your second meal. And so some days I'll do too mad, especially if I'm on vacation or I'm on a trip or something. And typically for me, OMAD works really well having breakfast and having like a late lunch. Um, that just seems to be the really a really good balance for me. But I think if you're fasting, you should try to go at least 16 hours fasted from the last meal to the first meal or 18 hours ideally. And then um, 18 hours would be a six hour eating window. So 18 hours fasted would be a six hour eating window. So, so that doesn't mean you're eating the entire six hours. It just means you are having two meals within the six hours and the rest of the time you are fasting. Okay, so if that makes sense. Um, typically that's the easiest way for people to start. They will start with that. And the way I would use the supplements within there is you can use the Nat Ketones and the Keto Pro anytime in your fasted window that you find is your biggest struggle that to help you. Okay, so it's a tool to help you. And if you need the appetite control, you wanna get ahead of it, ahead of the cravings, ahead of the hunger, ahead of the time when you normally know that you are going to be looking for either Starbucks or something like that. So if that's in between those two meals, then that's when it is, and that's great. I would say do your pro, like I would, this is how I would do it. I would do the pro, ice and water, um, as like a breakfast, and then an hour or so later, then I would have my actual meal. So you're kind of preparing your body for the solid meal. And then either in between, I would have the Nat Ketone or then at night or both. You really can build it up however you best want to build it up. And then the rest of the time, you wanna be just drinking plenty of water and lots of water. The more water you drink, the fuller you're gonna feel. I found, I will do black iced coffee in the morning every morning, but that is a time when you could have your ketones if you want ketones then instead. I don't recommend making like a fat coffee or adding cream to your coffee or that sort of thing. I think that's a habit that would be 
beneficial to you to release and then just focus on when you wake up. I, I like the black coffee. So like right now I've got iced black coffee. I do not like black hot coffee. It's too bitter for me, but I love iced black coffee. So that's what I do. So how do I know this is going to be a long term lifestyle and not a short, quick fix thing? The reason I know that is because right now I'm not looking at the finish line. I'm not like, when is this over? When can I eat what I want to eat? When can I go on vacation so I can say, screw it to my diet? I'm not thinking like that. I actually, there's no finish line. And at this point forward, I am so happy with my results and where I am. I do not need to, I don't have the need to feel like, oh my gosh, I need to lose more weight. I feel really good where I am. And so I feel like if even if I maintained at this point forward eating exactly how I'm eating, I would be completely happy with that because I'm not restricted. I love fasting. I love eating complete food freedom, whatever I want to eat. Of course, I'm going to get my microbiome retested and all of that, my cellular data and health information, all of that retested to see the improvements there and, and where I'm going and heading. I'm going to do that um, probably at the four month mark. And then, and then I take it from there, right? So like my actual food list of things to avoid, you know, based on my microbiome, that's going to change as I heal things within myself. So as of right now, I'm not eating red meat because that comes up in my avoid list. But later on, I might be able to eat red meat. It might move, shift from my avoid list to maybe my minimize list and then my enjoy list. That's the goal, right? And this is the big part of the food freedom. It's not like I can't have that forever. It's just I feel so good without it now that it I have no desire to eat it and I have no cravings for anything either. There's no cravings because when you allow yourself to just say, what do I feel like today? I want that chicken sandwich and the fries and I eat those things, I don't feel like I need anything. <laughs> after that like someone asked me like do you eat sweets and desserts and that sort of thing and this is what i want you to know i have absolutely no cravings for those foods if i did i would fit them in to my calorie budget but i don't have cravings for them so i don't eat them and that's the difference um and i think that's a big major shift because when i was keto if i had oh we've got dessert here and there's a cake here, I'm gonna eat it because I don't normally get this. So I have to like, like this is my one shot to eat it. So totally different mindset, totally changed everything and all that. So if, if you're new here, you definitely wanna watch my video on how I lost the 20 pounds in the two months. I go into a little bit more detail on that. That video I'll put up next here. And then yesterday I uploaded another video basically expanding on some of this and I'm going to continue bringing more of this content to you guys. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. It does help me figure out what you guys want to learn about with these new upcoming videos.